Welcome to the podcast, A Drink with Derek. Follow comedian Derek Richards on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel and watch all episodes of the podcast. Now grab a drink and join your host, Derek Richards. Quit bottling your fries and eat. I'm not hungry. I'm not paying if you're not gonna eat. I didn't ask you to pay. I'm just saying, money's a little tight. Yeah, I see that. I'm gonna need you to cut this attitude you got going. It's really making me lose my fucking appetite. Is everything okay for you guys? Oh, everything's great, thanks. Can I get another beer? Can we get a chance? Can you please ask the chef to my brother's balls in the kitchen? Yeah, they're very small. I don't want a mistake if they're like peas or rice or something. See what I can do. I'll just have another diet. Thanks. You're such an asshole. You know that? I told you Jackie was trouble. Wow. Where did that come from? I just knew, okay? It's my job to look out for you, Mike. Please don't call me that. A woman like that's gonna have you wrapped around her finger. That's the difference between you and me. You're vulnerable. It makes you weak. Being vulnerable makes me weak? Yes. Believe me, I get the intrigue. A woman like that's been around the block a few times. I done shit in bed that would shock porn stars. And what happened? You fell in love and let this girl get inside your head. Now look at you. You're like a neuter puppy. Isn't that what happens when you fall in love? Letting someone in? But I know who I am. You can't let it trap you. You can't let it mess with who you are, man. Love takes hostages if you let it, bro. Right. Look, I don't want to see you sitting around like the zombie you've been doing for the past few weeks. I'm going to be nice enough to let you tag along when we meet my friends tonight. How's that sound? For your bachelor party? No, that's all right. What? You got other plans? What are you going to do, sit around, watch beaches, eat a pint of ice cream? I don't know who talked Denise into wanting to marry you. I'm your brother. I don't have a choice. But her, on the other hand... You're coming. How's that for a choice? Oh, just come have one drink. Who knows? Maybe you'll meet a girl. Hey, it's Derek Richards, coming to you from uh, not Las Vegas this time. I'm here in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, at the uh, Palatial Comedy Condo, which is actually not a bad comedy condo here in... Uh, Oh, it's a, a condo. Rock. It's a condo. It's a house. It's actually pretty nice. I mean, you can see the, uh, you know, I'm in the bedroom right now. The bed, the bed, uh, bed frame behind me looks you got, like you got you some, people might have been, some people might have been, uh, you know, tied to it at some juncture, but uh, oh, no judgment. You, you know? remember? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to turn on a black light in here. I'll say that much. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Before do you we have somebody over, stand, yes, we stand do. with you? Yes, we do. He's, uh, he's in the other room. I'm sure he's probably hating me for, uh, for doing this interview at uh, what will be 9 a.m. Central time, but uh, he's he's a good dude. I'll buy I'll buy him lunch and apologize profusely later. <laughs> I'm here with uh, my buddy who is uh, I've known this guy for it's got to be 20 plus years, brother, and um, we have uh, worked together many many times on uh, comedy stages, which is how I knew you for the longest time. Uh, you've seen him in multiple uh, commercials, I think, uh, what like over 50 commercials, also a bunch of. Uh, a couple feature films. We'll talk about that and a bunch of uh, film projects that you're working on right now. Some indie films. You've done cruise ships. You're still working as a touring comic. You um, are the most ripped human being that I know. Uh, not outside of Hugh Jackman and Wolverine, which I think you could probably kick Wolverine's ass, to be honest with you. Good buddy of mine, Carl Remy in uh, South Florida right now. How you doing, buddy? What's up, brother? That sounds like I'm doing a lot of shit. You are doing a lot of shit. Dude, a lot of those commercials are infomercials. And if you know how infomercials work, it's like it's like doing the porn of being on like the porn industry, but you're on the filming side, you know. It's, tell it's, me, tell me some of the infomercials that you had done. Oh my God. I you know, there's so many, dude. Like I can't even it just depends on what it right. A lot of them are in pre-development stages. Okay. So they and I don't even know if they're if they ever got out to the main, the, the, but the, but every product I've tried, pretty much every one, maybe one or two, doesn't work. You have to always like duct tape it, or like <laughs> like I'm giving out the secret. I don't give a shit. Like 
Like, I'm like, it, it just, like, they're like, okay, well, we'll use a different product and then we'll, and we'll act like it's this, you know, it's, everyone was bad. That's um, that, that's I did one funny. for uh, abs one time and I had to do the, uh, the, the before and after picture. I had to do both. So they're like, stick your stomach out as much as you can. And they're like, Hey, drink, drink two liters of soda. They're trying to give me soda. I'm like, I'm not drinking soda. To, 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 to make myself look bloated and it was so bad well, that's dude, when i are, wanted to just quit well for the love of humanity could you uh just eat a basket of chicken wings or something you are you've always been in great shape but i mean now this uh this captain america physique that you're walking around with is really making the rest of your uh comedian <laughs> friends feel like complete and total shit so i hope you're happy well tim wilkins has good good physique he's, he's tim competing Wil Tim Wilkins is ripped. Tim Wilkins he's, he's, he's way more ripped than I am. He competes, so that's different. Yeah, that doesn't count. Yeah, he walks around com in competition shape. No, ba he's, basically, he's, I'm he's, only he's oiled. All, he's oiled all the time. <laughs> I replaced one addiction with the next, man. He is oiled all the time. I'm oiled all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> Who doesn't oil all the time? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm greasy as a motherfucker right now. You don't even know. You know what I love? You're more pasty white than I am. This is great. I am this. Oh, I'm, it's horrible. I mean, this is a well. It's also I'm in this kind bad, of yeah. Which, it's bad lighting. You're lit up. The light you look ghostly perfect. right now. Oh, I do. I look. Uh, yeah, this is like I should be in a uh, a scene in Law and Order where the bodies the body temp is like 68 degrees. <laughs> so you've been working a lot now, huh? I've been trying. You know, I'm in. Uh, it, you know, it's I've been going to. I, I joke around. It's the uh, the red state tour. Yeah, I, mean, I saw that. It's great. Oh, We're totally. Florida, South Carolina, uh, Indiana, Arkansas. Jimmy Schubert Oklahoma. just moved down here. <laughs> this is red state. Did he really? Wow. Everybody, everybody's leaving, man. Everybody leaving Jimmy's California. A, uh, Jimmy's a funny, funny dude, man. I didn't know that he yeah. moved down to Florida. I knew he was in California for the longest time, and I saw him do a bunch of dates down in South Florida, but I didn't know that he moved down there. But no, I've been yeah, keeping busy, which is good. We're going to do some stuff together. I'm going to... He's a uh, he's a funny funny dude. I've had him on the uh, on the podcast before, and oh, he, he did. Oh yeah, he's a trip. Oh my god, yeah, he's, he's great. So, he is so damn funny. Your podcasts are great, man. I, I watched the one with Forrest and Al. Yeah, Forrest Shaw, um, Al Jackson. It's like a South Florida reunion here. Yeah, it was good to see them, man. They're all. It, you know what's funny? You got a team of rejects you're you're putting on. That's all alcoholic, drug gamblers, and. Like, like we're all ex addicts, you know. <laughs> those are the good stories, though. Right, right. Those we're make, all those make the fun stories. Nobody wants to hear I about. I feel someone... like you're not a good entertainer if you don't go through the darkness to get to the light. You know, like you, I feel like I know you, you, you got to get there. I mean, I know you drink now. You got to double it up. You got to speed it up. Let's go. <laughs> you, you should be drinking right now. What's wrong with you, brother? <laughs> I'm having, I'm having coffee trying to acclimate my uh, my head from Pacific to Central Time. So Dude, that coffee would be my vodka in the morning. I can't. Oh, well, I was going to ask you because I I knew you for the longest time and as a uh, a party animal comic. I mean, yeah. you were you walk in the room and you're just a tornado of you're like super high energy. Hey, what's going on? Da -da -da. And then afterwards, it's like, dude, let's go have some drinks and. We'd end up hanging out and having a blast and uh, getting in all kinds of trouble. And it, when uh, when did you stop or what made you stop drinking? Well, before I get to that, well, now it's more like I'm super high energy on stage, but just really chill before and after. <laughs> so people are like, who is that guy? Like when they just meet me, right? Like, oh, this is going to suck. And then when I get off stage, <laughs> that was that's the same. <laughs> you know, it's just different. Well, before your character off stage was exactly who you were on stage. So well, yeah, it still is. I mean, right? It's yeah, it's still it's you know, and 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 that's what most comics do is just a version of themselves. It's just it's just that you turn it on a lot heavier, and you know, you're I'm in the scene, I'm in the moment more. You know, so we're telling jokes. Well, there's nothing worse than somebody who is on all the time. Oh my god, I can't stand it. Someone it's who just much. does not turn the act off. Like you go to lunch with them and they try to order food like Jack Nicholson. Oh, I know. You know, <laughs> I know. Oh, do hey, they I'll sleep like a, that too? I'll just have like, a yeah. I'll have a cheeseburger and some fries, man. I'm like, I just want to kill you, please. Right. Just the waitress die. doesn't care that you can do jack. Yeah, she's it, she's working. She's working swing shift at Chili's. She doesn't give a yeah. shit. She doesn't give a shit about your Jack Nicholson about your impersonations. But uh, no, what made you? What made you uh, finally stop? Um. Well, I saw. I, I 
people, you know, it's funny too. Cause I saw your Troy, Troy Thurgill interview. Um, he said it was just, I was ready. I was doing, I was doing a uh, cruise ships, um, 10 years. Um, and it was, and it was fun. It was a party, you know, especially in the beginning, it was a party and I like to drink anyways. And then, but it, it was like, I, you know, I would do a three day cruise, but we'd fly in and fly out, but I'd do a three day cruise and then fly home. And then a couple days later, do another three day cruise or five day cruise or whatever. And it's, it's every day I'm rotating people, guests that are on their vacation and partying. So I've already partied that whole week. And then I get on a new cruise. It's different people that want to party again. So I'm back in partying mode again. So it was like, I was, it was like me taking a vacation every fucking five days, you know? So it was like, I'm drinking every night. Of course I'm going out. I'm drinking. That's what I do. I, I, you drink when you go out. So when you go out every night, that's when you drink, you know? So, and I did that for a while and then it turned into like maybe probably like seven or eight years in just, I started drinking in the day in the more I, I started getting depressed. Um, you know, you couldn't tell. And, you know, it, I was depressed because I didn't want to be a cruise ship act. I didn't want to, I was like, uh, my creative, fr- like it was, you know, you have to do these clean shows, sure. which I always put on a mask to do because it's like, this isn't, here's what I'm going to do. This isn't me. I hate your kids. I, I, the most annoying thing in the world is to have little kids at the fucking show, but I'll play whatever game this is. Cause they're paying me pretty decent and I'm, and I'm doing what I love, but I wasn't loving it doing it. And then I can't wait till the midnight show. And then I have to chop up my my act and put, oh, I'll put that joke as a clean one. And I'll put that. And it was just like, what am I doing? And, and but that was for a while. I did years thinking like that. And I would I would add in bits where I was doing music numbers and shit just to alleviate the the different. Like I was I was writing music and you know musical songs, funny songs, and dancing and shit just to do something else, man. Yeah, I don't it blame you. So. Yeah. It was so, and then, and then it got to the point where like I drank to medicate, you know, and I was like, well, and also people don't realize too, like when you go on those ships and you're working like the crew bar, which is separate from the passenger bar, you can go down there and you can get a beer for a dollar. Yeah. Everything's a dollar. It's a dollar dollar store of alcohol. It's a dollar store of alcohol. And they have, they have beer, beer and wine. That's not even the dollar. That's like, fuck that. Like I was getting bottles, 10 bucks, a full bottle. Yeah. And, but I was going through like two bottles a day. Easy. Whew. Like, Oh dude, I was like, I was all 180 all the time. Wake up breakfast. Boom. I mean, and it got to the point. I just wanted to stop my arm from shaking. So I, just, right. I was like, let me, uh, let me, you know, I'll be, it was like the scene in, uh, leaving Las Vegas, man, where he's at, he's waiting to get to sign his, you know, to, to sign the, the check to, to cash his check and at the bank, he's, right. he just, you know, he's doing this. And he's like, I'll wow. be right back. And then comes yeah. back, I'm ready to sign. La, la, la. Like that was me. Every day I was like, well, I'm ready to sign. You know? Well, man, you uh you you took whatever uh focus you had on drinking and uh you you you've done a fantastic job with uh just just you yourself. I mean, I think it's uh fantastic you've been able to uh you know turn yeah, things 20, around to where it's been so much more productive. Yeah, and well, here's that's what it, it was. It was like 2013. Or 2012, I think there was the, yeah, 2012 or 2013, I forget. I, but it was like almost to a day where uh, Troy quit drinking. So that's, mm-hmm. I found that very fascinating. Um, I don't keep, I don't keep tabs. I didn't go to a meeting. I didn't, I, I didn't, was going to ask if that was something that you needed to do. No, my one, it's like, it's like, it's funny. Corey Taylor of Slipknot and all that has pretty much the same kind of, kind of story how he quit he, when he quits something it's in his mind he's done like right. it's, it, it's over for good and that's how i am and the thing with me quitting and, and i tried to quit myself which is not a good idea so it was like the most painful experience and then i started to hallucinate and i had to get hospitalized for like a week they put, wow. i was seeing shit i was talking to people that weren't there i was uh, like i could have killed myself um so that was pretty much my last <laughs> and Damn. uh yeah so i uh, um and uh and it was funny i went in i went in and i was like my my sister had taken me in after a full night of me just hallucinating the whole night and they were gonna let me go from the hospital 
This is and right when you quit. You quit cold turkey. Drink. Yeah, I quit cold turkey for seven days. It was the most painful experience. I don't care. Like you could torture. Like it was like every like little cell in my body you could feel to you know, like I couldn't I couldn't move I couldn't but I was like I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it I'm like I don't care I could have just drank and it would all gone away but I didn't yeah, do good it good for you yeah and then and then when I they put me on like lithium and shit like that so I was I was seeing I was talking to people seeing shit and and I went in with my sister and they were gonna let me go with some medication and then I started talking to somebody that wasn't even in the room and she's like are you gonna let him go now you know, so so they kept me, so they kept me there, and it was great because they kept me there. The first night, I wake up, and like I see all the doctors just walking by, like you know, like and I, they're just staring at me. And then the one lady doctor comes in. What? No jokes this morning? And I was like, What did I do last night? Like, what the? Fuck? You know, they're googling me and seeing what the what I've done. Like, I don't even know what I did in the. You know, whatever they gave me, I was probably just fucking, I, I have no idea. That like, is it, so funny. Yeah, but man, I, I like, like I said, so embarrassing. I give you all the credit in the world for being able to uh, put the brakes on and make it as, and make yourself now as productive as, uh, well, yeah. And then, like I was saying, as you um, have. when I got off, I was like, well, now this is what I wanted to always do. I wanted to act. I want to be an actor. And, uh, so I didn't know how to do it, but I didn't know how to be a stand up. So I'm like, well, I can do that. If I didn't know how to be stand up, I became a stand up. Now let's figure out this part. So I did all the bullshit classes and and whatnot and learned learned as some far as, as far as acting classes or yeah. was it, because you've gone into and we'll get into this, but you've gone into uh, screenwriting and producing and everything else like that. So everything self taught. So you, oh, so you took acting classes. You, you took the acting classes, but as far as all the other aspects of it, yeah, to learn to 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 network to see what has to be done. So I took them. I didn't. I'm sorry. I got like a. I'm drinking a fizz drink, which is like a energy, natural energy. Um, uh -huh. So my lips are all. Is that one of your infomercial products? No, this is my baby sells it. My girl, <laughs> Arbon, all healthy stuff. Hit me up if you want some Arbon. Um, she, uh, she, yeah, uh, so, so yeah, um, what was I talking about? About oh, acting. self talk so, acting. So, yeah, I, I, took these, I took these classes and. Um, just to see what the technical side of it and it was it, it didn't really do anything for me i feel like these are just kind of like the people that teach acting classes are kind of like just trying to make a buck and and uh and and and, and almost taking advantage of a, a young actor or um somebody that just has these dreams that are probably that are just so out there like to be an actor it's very tough it, it especially in south florida um so, so I did all that stuff, and I got a, I got a couple of uh, casting uh, agents, got some headshots, got some agents. So now you um, think the actual acting classes were sort of a scam? Yeah. It, I mean, it, you, you need them to, like, I guess, train, if you will. Um, I don't think – it's not a scam, but some of the workshops were scams. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm, not, yeah, I'm, not looking to, yeah, I'm not looking to call anybody out on this, but, I mean, I didn't know if this yeah. was – if if it was the uh, acting classes that you thought were – no, no, I don't, people that weren't as qualified. Yeah, it's a, yeah, and and normally it is. It's like you look at what they've done in their past and you don't see anything. You're like, mm. right, which is fine if you want to just learn some tech techniques and right. and some and you want to you want to try and learn. They have knowledge of what is happening, but I I, I feel like for me it didn't help me at all. It wasn't. Right. It, I have already been acting for 23 years doing stand up, you know, like or 20 years at the time or whatever, 18 years I was in it. But even the so, good thing about you taking that class and learning that that wasn't going to help you exactly. is, also, is a lesson in and of itself. And, and then these workshops that people these don't look at it as they look at it as well. This was just not productive. I hate this. Why did I waste this money? But the fact that you came right. out of that knowing that, listen, for me, this was not going to advance me further that's a lesson to be learned that people need to kind of you know listen yeah. if you, no matter what happens no matter what you take right. no matter what you do if you didn't learn something you learn something everything i've done has been a learn no matter if it cost me money or if it was bad or if nothing is bad i learned from everything i just kept getting experience mm -hmm. and that's what you want to do you want to do everything you can and gain that experience which will lead you up to the point where i'm at um when that in these workshops, like these, these you go to these workshops, these casting agent workshops, but you go there to be seen by them, 
and to, to try and get work. You don't go there right. to learn. Like the, the last thing you want to do is go to a casting place to learn. And that's what I was doing. I was green. I didn't know. And they're like, no, you got to come here when you're so she can see you. So they put together these classes for a lot, you know, a decent amount of money just so you can be seen by them. It's a pay to play sport down here, you know, right, and, right. It, and it, that's in L.A. too. You know, it's any, everywhere. It's a pay to play sport, which I learned pretty, pretty early. You know, I learned all this stuff. And then I got I got I started getting some of these these roles where my learning kept coming through the roles. I would just learn on set. I'd learn in the scene. I'd learn, you know, so that was my acting. I get paid some of the gigs I get paid or some I do for free. And that was my workshop that I didn't have to pay for because I, it was on hands. You know, you can't get it's like going in front of a crowd every night open mic and you know it's like okay i'm learning i'm getting better i'm doing this but an attentive crowd you know right one that you can actually work out in so i well, did I, yeah i did ahead. all that and um but yeah question well no i was gonna say what made you uh start making films i mean there's a difference between acting and actually making a film and that, and that's the thing. And that's that's what I got sick of. I just didn't want to like I've never had any dreams of being famous. I have no that's why I didn't go out to LA. Not I take care of my mom, you know that. Um, mm -hmm. and I still do. And I don't I didn't have any aspirations. I don't want to be I, I'm not looking for fame. I'm looking to create and and make and 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 uh and do what I love, you know. And so I, I did all these projects. I did, you know, some feature films, did like eight feature films but some were small parts some were, a couple were leads um and um so i so i did these roles and i and i and i would go on these castings too for like 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 small parts like ballers for one line i'm mm -hmm. like i don't want it i don't want one line on ballers i don't i don't right. care to get on there to say i'm on ballers and go yeah which your car's right here sir that's not acting to me that's not what i want to do right so so I kept doing all this stuff and, and, and I got, I got the lead in a couple, couple roles, but it wasn't the, the content that I wanted. It, I was like, I, I saw all these holes in these scripts and I, and, and the, and the way they shot it and the mistakes they made and how, and the laziness of, 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 of a lot of people that didn't, that wanted to do it, but didn't take it seriously that, that, uh, that, and I'm like, and I'm the one to, I'm the one there half hour early. I'm the, and I'm just an actor. But I, you're late. You're the director. You know, you're yeah. late. You, you guys are making this film, but I'm the one working on the dialogue and telling you and trying to, and trying to do my best to create something that I've t taken because everything I do, I do 100 percent. So it's not for a lack of my effort. And then you see the finished product and you're like, you didn't even get this edited right. You didn't even take the time. Or, you know, or you cut out. I know there was better dialogue. I know I, I, I gave you better dialogue. I gave you better. You didn't even put that in the edit. You know, right. it's like, how, how do you, so I was like, I got, I started doing this little web series that I, I was kind of writing my, I, I wrote myself pretty much. And, um, and you know, just to start out called Jim Bratz. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was one of my first directors I did a short film with. So I had kind of had to keep it clean and co-write I had restrictions on it, which was great for me. Cause I learned, you know, and I, I got to, I got to write the stuff I wanted to and then act it out. So then, then I was like, I, I wrote a script. I wrote a script called Ghost Killers. I just wrote a full script in like two weeks. It it just I knew the I knew what I wanted. I knew the premise, but I didn't know where I was going to take it. And I found myself as I'm going. That's like most of my act. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I love your act, brother. <laughs> uh, you were one of the, you were one of the first comics, man, that I remember from Uncle Funny's down here. That I thought you were you were fucking brilliant. Um, with no, you're, very, just, you're very, when you're very, I was very, just very, a baby, man. When I was just a baby, you're, and I you're wasn't very, even a stand up. I remembered you. I was, I think I was just at a show and I remembered you. And then when we became friends, I was like, holy shit, man, he's one of the guys I admire. You, you are, and right. Troy, you're, you're, right. you're very, very kind. Troy Thirdgill, who is yeah. hysterical. And yeah, uh, I'll he, get to him he, in a sec. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, but no, you, so, so you're, uh, so, so you're putting, so I wrote this girl. I'm the kind, I'm the kind of writer that I found out that I can. I, I just wrote, I didn't know, I wrote it as if I'm watching the story too unfold. I didn't do an outline. I'm not an outline guy. I don't need to know what the beginning, middle and end is. I have an idea in my head. Um, as long as I, I'm a character, 
builder. I, I work with characters inside the piece. I develop the characters and they and it works itself out. And it just came to and it came. I just wrote this thing to the end. Of course, there's edits and re-edits and you go over it and you fine tune it. Sure. You do that 50 times. But the main the, the main bones is where it's at. So I was like, wow, I can really do this. Like my brain just thinks that way. And I, I'm good at scenes. I'm good at dialogue. I'm good at in the moment stuff. And I, I can make I can move a scene in, with little words and but make it interesting. And that's what I like to do because I hate watching boring scenes that just move dialogue, but there's really no there's no fun in anything. So well, and I would imagine that's probably why a lot of these actors end up getting into they experience the same level of frustration that you did. Oh, it's in it's gotta be like your your Tom Hanks, your Ron Howards and stuff like that, who and George Clooney who got into actual filmmaking where they were like they had the same attitude as you. They're like these products that I'm seeing that are out here look like not necessarily look like shit, but they could be better. Right. And, well, and that's the thing. And, and like you said, I, I saw a better scene that they did not edit into this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like I wanted to write, I wrote stuff that I want to watch. Right. I, I, I wrote stuff that's not out there. That's, that's, uh, I, I didn't write for structure. I didn't write for Hollywood. I wrote everything I've written so far. I want to shoot myself. I want, you know, I'm directing this piece called I Possessed. I'm directing it. I'm producing it with my girl, my girlfriend, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and uh, she's an actress in it too. And I'm 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 putting it all together. I'm I'm gonna. I didn't want to. I didn't want to give it to somebody because I I wrote this so I can shoot. I wrote it, to, it with an. I didn't write special effects in it. It's a character piece. It's got dialogue. Everything I've written, I'm able to shoot. Yeah, I'm gonna need some need a decent budget for a few of them. But not in the millions, you right. know. I, everything I write, I write within in my mind that I'm going to shoot. I'm not. I'm never going to give it away. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm going to see it through myself, and it's going to be if if it fails or if it's if it's whatever. It's it's then I'm responsible for it, and I always wanted wanted that because I had never had any control on anything else. And then I look at it, and I'm like, come on, guys, you know, like. I'm the one that's going to take that uh, that that passion and put it into the project. And, and and a lot of these people don't put that passion into their own projects. I don't see it. And, well, I think what happens is it, it, this kind of, and I apologize for the interruption, but I mean, it really oh, yeah. is when you talk about having control over this, if you go back and you look at when you were drinking, how you didn't have control. And now this is sort of a an extension of now, you know, my life is in control. Now I have control over this, this as well. This is, you know, a good example of something that, uh, you know, if I was just acting on it, I don't have control over it. Right. And instead and of now, being a complainer, yes, I did something about it. I right. never said poor me or I can't get the, I can't get the roles and, and people that are down here. Like, I don't know how you can make it as an actor down here. Like I don't, there's not, you can do a couple of commercials and get paid a lot of money if you're lucky but right. as a whole. Like I don't know how many, there's just not enough roles. There's not enough parts. There's not enough. And there's just definitely not big parts. Like I'm writing myself lead parts and I'm not writing myself because it's a, it's a vanity piece. I'm writing the parts I'm the best character for. I could have right. anybody audition for it. I'll audition for my own character. I wrote the, the I know what my limitations are as an actor. I know what, with with the piece involved, I'm the best person for that part. It's like, oh, he wrote it, so he's in it. Mm, that's not kind of like kind of like Mario Lopez as Colonel Sanders in that uh, in the new movie. Exactly. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is up with all this shit? <laughs> Mario Lopez as Colonel Sanders is like me playing Rosa Parks. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and that's also like doing cruise ships right there for me. Like, I don't want to do parts like that. Like I want to do, I want to do parts that that mean something, that have a message, that have. I don't want to play I, Colonel. I, I, I mean, was, I will. But I thought it was, I thought it was a meme. I'm like, I thought it was a a Photoshop joke that somebody put Mario Lopez's face on Colonel Sanders' body. I'm like, <laughs> this is this is hilarious. I'm like, oh no, this is real. This is actually, this is happening. <laughs> but but no, but yeah, I'm good for, for you money though. <laughs> Nice. Listen, that and that's the thing. Running. I don't want to sell out. 
I don't want to yeah. sell out. I'm not. And you know what? If 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 we don't make a dime, we're we're funding this movie ourselves. Like that's how much. I mean, we're gonna have a little bit of help, but um, me and me and my girl, like we believe in the piece so much that. And plus, you gotta. I have to put something out there that I've done to show what I can do, for, right? For anybody to invest in you. So it's well, now, that's basically how we're doing it. Now let me ask you that because you've been uh, it, it, there was the the scene that we played right before our interview started, which was from Love and Hostages. Yeah, which was a which was a production that you had done. Uh, what are the other projects right now? Before I go any further, where people can where can they find these? Well, Love and Hostages you can find on uh, like Amazon Prime. Okay. Uh, to be, uh, you know, like all, okay. Er like a lot of platforms, it's actually on the clip you you put you'll put up. Okay, cool. You put up. So gotcha. um, yeah, that's that's there. I got a f I got a few that I'm in, but it's it's all supporting or small right. small right. spots. Like uh, um, there's a there's a oh, it's some bad stuff. Like, there's some bad stuff out there. Like the reason why I always post love and hostages is that was my first. And it had in a while. I always have something in my heart. It was a supporting role, but that right. was my first. I have I have the lead in a movie called uh, W D E D that's not out yet. Um, another lead part in a movie called Adopted that's not out yet. So what is uh, what is W D E D? It's a uh, it's a uh, radio a uh, radio station's taken over by zombies. Sweet. We uh, yeah we shot it at the bone. All the DJs were involved, like Mike Calta, uh, Maurice Javon. I don't know if you know him. He's one of the DJs on there. The Bone. He wrote the he wrote the piece. Where is that um, station at? Is that down in South Florida? In Tampa. Oh, in Tampa. In okay. Tampa. Oh, I thought you might have been there doing traveling the road and stuff. No, no, I I I, I had heard of the station. I was trying to remember exactly where it was at. Yeah, so we did it. So that was an interesting piece too. It was. It's a spoofy, you know, zombie film. Right. Um, it was great because the the uh, I possess uh, was because of Maurice. Um, he's actually the he's the story created by of I possessed. He wrote this script, and here's how this all evolved for the for I possessed is he's he a good dude. Script. I I knew him. I knew him on the comedy circuit, and I knew that he was uh, a DJ a as well. Dude. But he's a funny, funny guy. Real good guy. Real good guy. And we stay at his house when we're up there. So I he had wrote this he wrote I possessed earlier and this was like four or five years ago we were now, what, is this, what is this about what's this movie about it, it's hard to really just give a general it's about a lot of things the, basically it's um elevator it's about, pitch Remy elevator pitch Remy hook me up yeah it's a I know it's it's basically a, <laughs> the, well the, the it's basically a, a, the secrets that are inside of people okay um. And 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 what people don't want to show basically come out in this film. It's a group of okay. five people that go to this house, um, and they all have different reasons. Like my character suffering from PTSD, so he's having these visions, hallucinations, which is a character I'm familiar with. Right. So I wrote, so I wrote this piece with that in mind. Um, uh, my uh, I, my sister comes over. She was in an abusive relationship. Um, uh, my my girlfriend at the time comes over. Uh, my 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 best friend, who's going to be Troy's part, Buckley. He's like a ex a psychologist. We used to be in the military together. Mm -hmm. My character reenlisted after like ten years being out, reenlisted in for another year, but they don't know why. And all these all these. And then my sister in the film gets taken over by this demon from this house that's been haunted um, for years. And uh, basically, this demon tell, asks us to stay the night or I'll rip her soul out. So basically the demons there, they all decide to stay obviously to save her. And, but throughout the night things start to unravel and it's not, and it's not about the demon that's inside the, inside the house. It's about the demons that everybody else possess. So all their secrets start to come out within the night. And oh, that is cool. Yeah. They, everybody starts to unravel individually. So it's not a demon movie as far as you would, Okay, now we got to get an exorcist and get out the demon. No, it has nothing right. to do with that. The demon is just the conduit to the to the re the people's to the people's insides. Their own secrets their own, their own secrets own them. Right. So, right. Yeah. yeah, haunt them. So so basically, at the at at, uh, at at the end, you find out 
find out everybody's demons right. and whether they make it through the night or not, you know? So it's, it's, that it's so a, cool. Yeah. How, it's far, a, how far along is this thing in, in the, uh, in the building process? Oh, it's, it's built, but we built it last year. Um, we were going to shoot April the same time, April to May through May, but obviously coronavirus. Right. Which, and, it, it, and we were in full pre-production since October of, la of 2018. Right. Um, so, so we pushed it. So in, a year later, we start production October 26th through May 26th. Uh, we have a farmhouse in Lake Placid. Uh, April, April oh, through May, God. not October. Um, sorry, my mind's thinking faster than I can talk. Um, so we, uh, we, we, we had purchased this farmhouse from this great, great guy in, um, in the middle of Lake Placid, Florida last year. And he, he obviously rolled it over to the next year. Sure. And, um, so we have our location lot because basically this is a one farmhouse shoot with all these characters in it. So which it is, is great. I mean, if it's any movie that's done well, you can shoot it in one spot. Exactly. And, and there's two locations, but there's basically that's the main one. And, um, and it, yeah, and that's why the story will unravel it's psychological thrillers. And this is why we're shooting this one first, because we can afford this. We can afford to do it with, it being one location it's right. still going to cost but it's not a bigger project like i have a project called gated that's about a suburban serial killer that runs rampant inside a gated community but that's like a whole you know there's tons of actors or some you know sets and stuff so that's going to take probably a million or seven hundred fifty thousand. like i can do it you know, low budget. I want to make low budget stuff, not, you know, that's not Hollywood stuff, but it'll look cinematic. It'll look like it's shot for, you know, it's high quality. Right. It'll look like it's shot because uh, the cameras we're using are eight reds and everything's right. great. The lens. Now, did you, now you got Troy Thirdgill on your movie, uh, I Possessed. He's going to be in that. Did you only get Troy in light of the uh, BLM movement? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. He's here. He's your minority hire. All the characters were white men. And I was like, we can't just have a group of white men on screen for, for an hour and 45 minutes. Nobody's going to watch this thing. So now we got a transvestite. We That's got Troy. That's Troy, by the way. And my, all Thirdgill. the characters don't know if they're male or female. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we're all named Pat, Terry... Um, very androgynous. Chris. Yeah, Chris. You don't know. Oh, we don't oh. specify in our movies now. Uh, Everybody can be what they want. Why should you? No. Why would you <laughs> want to go ahead and do something like that? What uh, What's involved with, because you're talking about you and your girlfriend funding I Possessed. How does somebody go about getting funding for, a, for well, a production? I mean, especially now you're talking about this other project that's going to be 750000 to you know a million dollars. I mean... I, you know, are there are there groups that procure this funding or is this pretty much on you or do you just know certain people to reach out to to try to get some money from? Well, that could be a, a little and, bit and, of and everything. Then, and then what would be their motivation to invest in your project? Which is that that's an easy answer right there is why we're shooting I Possessed. This is what we've already done. This is what we've made off it. This right. is what. You know, this is going to be the this to set the bar wherever. You know, this is our this is the quality we can do. This is what this I I built this production. This is what we're going to do with that. So thing. I possessed right now is going to be like your demo to submit to people that yeah. are going to be investors saying exactly this is, this is the body of work that I can put together with a minimal budget. Yeah. Imagine what I can do if I have a million dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. In essence, yeah, and it's and and the thing, and I don't know exactly where to networking, um, right. meeting the right people, somebody that has money that that wants to tax write off and get or something that finds executive producer sexy. Like that's that's the way you're you're probably gonna get as an independent filmmaker your your money unless you're in the know with a producer, right or or there, there are ways to where you can overseas sell it if you get the right name attached. Um, but I, you know, I'm not looking to attach a name just for the purpose of a name, and right. they might not be the best person for the for the role 
just so I can get funding in China or funding in, you know, I have my movie in Honduras or because, because that's what, that's what that actor uh, can accumulate, you know? So it's like, that's, I want to shoot this myself, but I don't want to settle for anything. I don't want to, I want to have the best actors possible. Um, so, so getting funding for the next one, hopefully this one will show anybody that we're trying to get investors. And especially if, we make money off this, then we'll have something when we make, you know, I always say when, never say right. it. Right. Sure. Um, um, then we'll have something substantial to show them like we can do it. And here's and here's how. And we can make this and I'll and I'll keep the budget as low as I can. And and the more we can make off it, you know, the more the more percentage back. Um, because a lot of these Hollywood films, they'll spend all this money and and he's like, Where did the money go? Where'd you spend it on? Mm-hmm. Would you have caviar at the craft services table? You know, um, so we're cutting corners. We're cutting corners as far as budget. So you're wise. saying I mean, it's so you're saying it's nothing but Costco hot dogs on the Carl well, Reed no, craft service. Actually, table. no, food is probably food is the most expensive actor in our film. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's tough, and especially because we're shooting overnights, so we got to get hot food like all night. Right. So we might actually the guy that owns the barn they shoot weddings there. We're probably going to use him. He caters stuff too, so we'll just, right. say, just cater the whole thing. What's the motivation for somebody to do indie films? Yeah, it's a it's a it's it's hard work. It's a process, man. I'm learning. My girlfriend's learning. I'm, I'm learning a lot, man. Um, it's and I, I'm going to direct this piece too. So it's um I'm learning everything. I'm travel agent. I'm getting people's flights. Um, I'm direct. I'm I'm putting the days we're going to shoot. Um, I mean, I have a good assistant director. I have I've I put together my team. You know, um. I went through like three directors of photography so I found w- one that I'm sure is my my guy and, and we're working together that's passionate. I wanted to have more passionate people that were skilled um, than than just anybody who's just doing something for some cash, you know. Right. Like they, they got to believe in the project. They got to read the script, they got to really believe in the project. Um so so I'm putting together the team. It's 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 anybody can you can I've done feature films where they half ass it and the cr- there's minimal crew, you know, nobody, you know, people are working for pizza the night. You're not getting the product you want. You're not going to, you're not going to have people working for you hard. You know, um, we're paying everybody that's on set. Nobody's working for free. Um, there's people that are going to help out and PA and, and do some, some various things because they believe in the piece. They believe in us. Right. And they know we're going to do the right thing. Um, for, for, you know when this when this film takes off or whatever the case may be but um but yeah it, it's a it's a whole there's there's a whole process and, and it's taken me a year or two like i feel like we're still we're still we're back in pre-production but i'm i started over you know we started right. over. we we had the locations i i pretty much have the crew but we got to figure out when you know the p we're going to bring everybody in when we're going to rehearse. We're going to do, get all the rehearsals out. Well, and the, that pandemic, was a, the pandemic hit the reset button on everything. Oh yeah. I mean, which was great for me because that's, I got Troy now. Mm-hmm. And, and it's funny because my other actor really doesn't know this yet, but he's not going to see this podcast. Um, but um, I had, is he in prison? No, he just, he, he doesn't really follow my stuff. Um, he's, I can't say who it is. Oh, Oh, he will now. See, yeah, now, right. see now you just went ahead and opened your pie hole. Yeah. Well, I have, well, and, I mean, and who's, who's going to pop up and he's going to, he's going to get 40 minutes into the interview and go and, well, Hey, Hey, wait a minute. Right. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if he does watch my stuff? Well, the thing is that he's, it's, it's nothing against him. He's a, he's a really strong actor and I really love him for the part. Um, I know. Right. Uh, Derek, you're always watching this thing. You're, you're going to have the lowest person. ratings. You're a horrible they, person. You're gonna have the lowest ratings you've ever had with me as a guest. <laughs> They'll be like, Jesus, I'm never having Remy back. Everybody else has been like in the hundreds of thousands. Um so but no, so no, this other guy who's an actor in the film now. Yeah, he's well known too. He's pretty much well known. Um but he, he almost a flight risk to me. He's out of LA. I don't feel I, I he, he he, I brought him down to rehearse last year and go do script script uh, stuff, and he was in, but I feel like it's he's not as in now. Um, and plus, he's he's very fearful of COVID, which if you are, God bless you. 
I, I, wa- I unfortunately know the statistics. I watch the, I watch the b- various different news sources, and I, I, think, I think the opposite. That's I'm the same. If I'm you the don't, exact same way. Exactly. Yeah, if you don't, I, that's fine. Don't go to the gym. Don't go to a comedy show. I get it. Yeah, let's stop um, penalizing healthy people. Yeah, and don't look at me like, fucking, well, you're not helping. Fuck you. I got an 80-year-old something mom. She's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and I feel like I've already had it too because I couldn't smell for two days. But whatever, I didn't. Right. But I didn't get tested because I wasn't sick. Um, I know. So and uh, yeah, but that's a whole nother other discussion. And uh, so Troy, so, so I saw Troy on your podcast, and I was like, Fuck. I don't know why, because he's always been my friend. Right. I was like, I don't know why I didn't. He's he is the character. Right. I was like, right. and so is the other guy. But I was like, Fuck, man, let me just reach out to him. Right. And just see what he's up to. Because I know he's not doing cruise ships. Right. Um, and then I watched the whole thing and I was like, oh, he's sober. Like like me. I'm like, we have so much mm-hmm. in common. And um, and then and then I hit him up and I go, hey, man, I'm going I'm to shoot you the script, man. You might not want to do it. You know, that's fine. I just want to see what, what your take is. Right. Because I didn't, I didn't sure. give him the part or anything. And then when he came back, he was just blown away, man. He was like, this is – he thought the script was so amazing – he got, he understood it. He, he's like, he, he's like, this is Hollywood stuff, man. Like, and he's read, he's, he went for four callbacks for Jerry Maguire and for Cuba's part. He yeah. showed me the script. He has the script. Like he was second in line to be like, he's that talented. Yeah. And he's like, this is, he, he's on board. He's like, I want to rehearse. I want to do this. He's not looking to take pay. Like he's man, like, man, that I, is so cool. I'm so, yeah. I am so happy you guys connected. Oh my God. And, and we talk on the phone now every day, texting or whatever. He's going to, I'm going to see him Monday. Every He's day. That's a bit much with him. We're going to, no, we're going to get his more, we're going to get his wardrobe and then we're going to go over the, the character. We're going to constantly, but he's invested. He's involved. He's there. Right. And that's all I wanted in my actors. And he goes, well, the other guy had kind of a name. And I said, it's not about that. Right. It's not about the name. Um, it's about if you and if this if you're passionate about the piece if you're gonna if you're gonna elevate the character that's all I want I want a good product I don't right. care about I got J P Sears on it too he's he's got he's got a name too but mm-hmm. he he loves the piece he wanted to do it you know as far as as far as I know he's still on board I mean I have to reach out to everybody but but uh, he's got a name you know he's 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 got a, he's a draw he's a few million followers you know right. Um, and that's that's great, but he loves the piece and he wants, you know. Well, and you gotta find some you gotta find people that are on board, like you said, that really want to be a part of this thing and really want to make it as good as it possibly can be, as opposed to because listen, I've we've all seen plenty of listen, how many shitty Nicolas Cage movies have we seen? Right. I mean, exactly. that guy, that guy, a script lands on his desk and he does the movie, and I and I watch it because I like Nicolas Cage, and I'm like, Me too. Really? Did you right. like- how in the rears were you with your Verizon bill where you needed to pick up that right. it's cash grabs now? And that's, and and that's just, yeah, I, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the Nicholas cage of today that doesn't want to sell out, but I've never done. I don't have his, his back you know, stuff. Like I'm in that level where I don't want to sell out and I haven't done shit yet. You know what I'm saying? Like now right. I don't want to sell out, but I've never, you know, like I haven't had a chance to really do some good shit, but I don't want to put, I'm not going to put bad shit out there just to shoot a film. Right. We're not shooting a movie. There's a message to this film. Like right. Every one of the films I've wrote, there's a message. And uh, and I want you a part of Gated. Uh, you, I'm getting all my friends in. Dude, I will fly down. Listen, oh. there has got to be some kind of – look. I, I, I want to be the guy that – listen, I'll, if you need a, a 50-plus-year-old Irish drunk guy oh, hell to, yeah, be, we do. to be a neighbor – a bartender, yeah. uh, a bouncer. No, I'm, no, I'm going to give will, you a good card. I will, get, I will get on a plane. I will fly down. I will be in any of your productions just so we can hang and, yeah. uh, and, and shoot the shit. Plus, I also believe in you, and I also uh, uh, believe in your passion and what you're putting together. I mean, I follow you on uh, social media, and people should follow you. Um, because, again, all the that's how I found out that you were doing all these different movie productions was you know seeing what you were posting up on Instagram. No, I and, appreciate that, brother. And 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 you'll you'll have more than just the valet Parker part. No, I got I got a good play. You're 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 a character that could be great and gated. Trust me. There's a lot of characters and they're all and all the characters I write, there's no throwaway characters. Every character that is is essential for the for the piece. No, I don't I would do love, it. I don't I would, do 
I would love to. Uh, I would love to be. Well, a well we're gonna director. we're gonna hopefully do something out in Vegas, like premiere this. We're gonna premiere it in a lot of. We'll 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 take over a theater and definitely sure. out there we'll take over one. So I got a few people, friends out there, and 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 I want you to come and bring people and absolutely. Whatnot. What what's um, the best? What's the what's the best lesson you've learned in making films? Yeah, uh, to stay true to yourself, man. To, to believe, to do what you believe in, to 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 listen, to listen, take advice, absorb everything. Um, and then filter out what you what you what 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 you feel is right and wrong. Um, like I'm constantly learning in stand up. I'm still bettering myself now. After you know, like I'm still growing. I still can grow more. And I'm always gonna be like that in filmmaking. You know, it's like we're gonna constantly grow, and that's and that, that's what I've taken from stand up is that I'm going to always constantly be learning and growing. And this is going to be no different. I'm going to try and make the least amount of mistakes as possible, which I've taken from all these other productions. Right. right. Make those mistakes. because I've seen them firsthand and, uh, and uh, put it into my production. And I, yes, of course I'm going to make mistakes. Of course I might be like, Oh, I would have shot that differently or I would have, but it's not going to be for a lack of preparedness. Right. I'll be 100% prepared as prepared as I can be for this project. And that's what I've learned: just be prepared, come in, work hard, and your people around you will work hard. You know, because I there's there's a lot of projects I've done where they didn't work hard. I'm like, why do I care more about this piece than the person putting it together? Right. Yeah. Higher character, teach skill later. Um, no, exactly, because you can't you can't teach work ethic. No, you can't. You can't either have, and everybody can say they want to be in a movie. They want to. They want to. To shoot a movie, I'm a director. Everybody's like, I'm a director. I don't say I'm a director yet. Right. You know, I don't. I haven't directed anything. You know, it's it, you can say and anybody can be a director. It's not like it's the, you know fucking rocket right. science. You know, right. but it's just you. It's like it's like when people call themselves comedians and comics. You don't have any other job on Facebook. Like that's your. Right. I'm a comedian, right. really, because you you don't work at Home Depot or Lowell's or you don't. You sure you're just a comedian? You know what I'm saying? Like how do you, you did an open oh, mic? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You did a you did a restaurant, and now you're just comedian. Like you're now you're on our level. What we sweated, right. fucking late nights, like fucking just doing shitty gigs, roads and shit like that. But now you're on. Now we're all the same. Mm. You know. But they, but they, I don't care. Call yourself what you want to call yourself. But are right. you? Did you put in the work? You know. Right. And that's what it's gonna say. Well, here's what I here's what I did in film. So yeah, I put in the work. Yeah, I'm a director. And, and, and that's the question you need to ask anybody, you know, is if you're going to call yourself something, did you put in the work to be able to actually say this is what I am? And that's and that's regardless of what, whatever you do, whether it's, you right. know, comedian, actor, it's, uh, you know, a builder, you know, architect, whatever. You know, you got to exactly. put in the work. And be the you best, want. whatever you want to be, be yeah. the, try and be the best possible mm -hmm. thing that is, you know, uh, I don't want to be... Uh, I don't want to be a cameraman, right. so I don't I don't learn the te like I'm not big into the technical. You know, I can see on the screen what I want. Like, hey, can we put that there and that there? That's why I hired these people that know what they're doing. You know, yeah, but if like, you're gonna be a camera, to yeah, but if you're gonna be a cameraman, be the best cameraman that you can possibly be. Exactly. You know, and, and a lot of people try and do all of them at once, and it's a lot, man. You know, you can, but no, it's a lot. It's no, it's, that's extremely tough to pull something like that off. What uh, If you were in, let me ask you two uh, quick questions as we wrap up here that are a little bit yeah. uh, off the path. Yes. If you were yes, in sorry, Animal man. House. No, 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 not at all. If you were in Animal House, what character would you have wanted to play? Yeah, that's a tough one. Here's why. Because it's been so long since I've seen Animal House. So I'll do, I'll do you one up on that. I wrote a pilot for a TV show. This is the character okay. I want to play. Okay. It's about these three guys. Um, and, and we're going to shoot this. I'm going to get all my people in it, and you, you'll definitely be in it. Um, uh, Troy Troy was the other one of the other main characters. Actually, it's funny how this all rolls into each other. These three guys right. are approaching their, uh, their, their mid-40s. Um, my, my character's a bartender, still does drugs, drinks, 
he bangs older women. And I'm not talking like older. I'm talking like old women. Like that, that's his fetish. And uh, and then we got we got the, the black character who's uh, – and th- these guys are still in shape. The black character who's got – Who's married to the DA is a is a stay at home dad. You know, ne- went to the army back out of high school, but never did anything. Then we got the other character, kind of a- out of shape, overweight, um, just divorced, six months, uh, living in you know in a one room apartment now, lost his high paying job. So all these characters get together one night, and the one guy comes in drunk and convinces the other two through a, through a story. To go to play because they all never went to college, okay. And they so they all still have eligibility to play football. They were all football players in high school, so right. they find the shittiest Division three school and go back and play for that at their old age. So it's basically kind of old school meets Friday Night Lights. Nice meets Golden Girls. Wow, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, so I so like basically, that. it's these people that are trying to relive their college dreams, right? Of, like the like the one guy doesn't even tell his wife he enrolled back in college. Like there's all okay. this this story behind shit. The the two the, they're staying at the dorms, you know. Like so you're gonna have these this mix between the older generation and I the, like and the, the old school meet so Friday Night Lights comparison. That's cool. Yeah, because it's Friday. Because that's always what I wanted to do was play college football. And I never did, and I always regretted that. And so I wrote this comedy piece. Um, so I have the pilot written. I just actually sent Troy it yesterday. Um, well, so I'm we're gonna, gonna shoot that pilot. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna shoot that pilot uh, at some point, just ourselves, and then shop that around. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you down for uh, if you were in Anim House, you would have played Otter. Okay, perfect. Which is a great character. That's Tim Matheson's character. So I'm gonna put you down for that answer. I gotta rewatch that. Yeah, he's an asshole. <laughs> no, it's it, he's the he's the he's what the main guy. He's the, one of the architects okay. in the thing. So you're gonna yeah. Okay, cool. I'll put you down. I for like Otter. more the anti-hero. <laughs> well, then that would be Belushi. So uh, we can. Uh, oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> we can put you. Yeah. Well, it sounds like your early drinking days were very Belushi esque in Animal House. Oh, so, yeah. uh, so you know what? Oh, I'm yeah. gonna take I'm gonna take Otter off and put you down for Belushi. <laughs> there you go. So now, last question here. Uh, you, y- your girl comes home. What do you do to set the mood where she knows magic is going to happen? Uh, I'm breathing and standing there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's on? Oh, it's so on. You, you are so... It don't garbage. matter. She walks into a room. Do you see how gorgeous she is? <laughs> I'm like, it's on, baby, right? <laughs> We're doing this, right? <laughs> That's, you're so romantic. I can't believe yeah. there's no, I can't believe you haven't gone into the romance genre. Man, you know, I'm a lover, not a fighter, but I, I will fight for love. <laughs> what? <laughs> Makes no sense. I couldn't think of a better way to end this interview. That's part I would I'm not a, I'm a lover, not a fighter, but I would fight for love. <laughs> Man, I love you, brother. Dude, you're fantastic. Your website, carlramey.net. Yeah. Go on yeah, there. Dot, dot com or dot net. Same thing. Because it's got all the stuff uh, talking about the different films that you're working on. And that's how I found yeah, out about, w, about WDED and Gated and the other movies that you're uh, working on, yeah. too. I know that uh, I Possessed is going to be amazing. And uh, I know you guys are going to do uh, uh, great things, man. I'm so happy for you. Thanks, my brother. Yeah, Instagram, just call Remy. I mean, you can join my 1,700 followers I've had. I'm blowing up. I'm blowing up, people. <laughs> I got nothing. I don't even try anymore. <laughs> You're awesome, dude. <laughs> I'm my brother. You'll stay in touch, man. Thanks for listening to A Drink with Derek. Find out when Derek is appearing near you by checking out DerekRichards.com. See you next time for A Drink with Derek.